So that is what we'll be creating. But before we begin, you'll need two items. One is the footage that we'll be working with, your footage that you'll be working with, and the second is the sharing gun PNG, which I will leave the link in the description below. This will be a simple tutorial, but I'll try to be as descriptive as possible for those who are new to After Effects. So after you have dragged your footage and the sharing gun PNG into the project panel, we'll create a new composition with the footage. You can either drag the footage to this composition icon or you can right click over here and then select new composition and then you set the width and the height according to your footage dimension and then hit OK. I've already done mine so I'll just press cancel. And once you have brought your footage into the composition, we'll start to track the eye. If you're tracking both eye, make sure to track each eye individually because there's always slight movement differences between the iris. So right click on your footage, select track and stabilize and then track motion. We'll be tracking the right eye. So bring the plus icon to somewhere that has some contrast in the iris. Don't select like this black area because this will result in a very inaccurate motion track data. So make sure there's some contrast. In this case, I'll select here. This is the highlights from the light. Also, it doesn't matter where you start your track from. From here or from there, it doesn't matter because you can always track forward and then track backwards. So let's go here. And then start to track forward. You'll notice that the track actually jumps around when my eye starts to close. But that doesn't matter. We'll fix that later. Also, you can hit the U key to bring the tracking data. Usually, you won't be able to see the data because this is closed. So just press the U key and then it will show you the tracking data. Now go to where we started the tracking data from and then now we'll analyze backwards. Okay, and now we have to start to fix the areas where the track starts to jump. Press the page up and page down key to move frame by frame. So you can see it starts to jump over here. So we'll just shift it to where we believe the light source is. Okay, when we no longer look at the iris, we can completely forget about the track. So now let's fix the back of the footage. Okay, the eye fully shuts. We can completely ignore the track now. Now we'll create a new null object. Right click, new null object. Now from the tracker tab, we'll select edit target. Select the new null object that we created, hit OK, and then hit Apply to both the X and Y dimensions. This will add the tracking data to the null object. Now if you scrub through the footage, you can see that the null object is actually moving along with the iris. Now we'll create a new solid, new solid. Click on the Make Com Size button and then hit OK. Now hit T on the keyboard. This will bring up the opacity properties and bring down the opacity a bit so that we can see the background. And we'll select the ellipse tool from the top. If you don't have the ellipse tool option by default, just click and hold. And then we'll select the ellipse tool and then we'll create an ellipse around the iris. You should hold down the shift key. This is to ensure that the ellipse tool is proportional. This looks about right. Okay. And now we bring the sharing gun in. Hit the S key on your keyboard. This will bring up the scale properties and then we'll scale the sharing gun. For me, I know the scale is to be 7.8. Hit the V key to change to the arrow tool on your keyboard so that you can move this. Okay, 
and I'll bring the shooting gun below the black solid. You might want to use the arrow keys on your keyboard to keep the shooting gun so that it matches better. Okay. And now we'll change the track mat of the shooting gun to alpha mat. If you don't have this option shown, just click on the toggle switch mode. This will show you that. Okay. And now go back to the black solid and make sure the opacity is back to 100. You might want to adjust the shotgun gun just a bit so that it's centered. Now click on this effects tab and we will make the shotgun gun look a bit more believable because as of now it's very sharp compared to the whole footage. It's very sharp and very bright. So we'll right click over here. Under the blur and sharpen, we'll select fast box blur and we'll blur the radius to about 6. So depending on your footage, if your footage is very blur, you might have to increase this value a bit more. So for me, I think 7 should be fine. Alright. Now we'll add a color correction, curves, adjustment, and then under the channel, we'll select alpha and bring the alpha down a bit so that we can actually see the iris. As you can see, the highlight starts to appear, which is the light source. Somewhere around here is fine. And now select the black solid and hit M on your keyboard. This will bring up the mask properties. If you hit M once, it will bring up the mask path. If you hit M twice, it will bring up all the mask properties. So we'll change the feather to about 8 pixels and contract the mask expansion to about minus 2. Now this looks a bit more believable. Now we select the black solid and select the Sharingan PNG. Click on this swirly icon and then drag over to the null object. Also try to keep your project as organized as possible. So select the null object, hit enter and then rename it to right. I tracking data. Ctrl A to select all and then just click on this to make it more pleasant to look at. And now if you scrub through the timeline, you will see that it's actually tracking quite nicely. So when the eye fully shuts around here, you can select this sharing gun image and then just trim the front. Do the same thing for the back. Okay. Now we'll create another mask and this mask will be for the eyelids. So these don't have to be very neat and accurate but it's just to make sure that it doesn't look like this so go to where the eyelid is fully open select the pen tool and draw the mask oh i'm on the wrong layer make sure you select the black solid before you draw the mask so just hit ctrl z to undo it select the black solid and now we'll create a mask Select the black solid, hit MM twice. And for the second mask, which we have just created, change it to intersect. And then on the mask path, hit on this timer icon. This is to keyframe the movements. So let's move forward and adjust the mask a bit. Hit V on your keyboard to change to the arrow tool. And then you can select individual points and adjust it accordingly. I'll do this very roughly, but you can take your time to make sure that it's really nice so that it looks more believable. And then once you have done the tracking, 
Same thing, go to the feather and then change the feather to about 4 pixels. And now hit the zero key on your keyboard. This will do a ramp preview. And you can see your sharing gun in action. Now we are left with one last thing, which is to add some animation to the sharing gun. So select the sharing gun layer, hit the R key on your keyboard. This will bring out the rotation properties. Go to the front of the image. Click on the timer icon to add a keyframe, go all the way to the back and change this value to 2. And now if you hit 0 on your keyboard again, you can see the sharing gun is animating and then it's also tracking with the eye. So if you zoom out, this is how it looks like. And also, you can actually add an adjustment layer to everything so that it looks more beautiful. What an adjustment layer does is actually it affects everything below it. So once we create a new adjustment layer, right click over here, add a color correction, brightness and contrast. Increase the brightness a bit, add a color correction, add exposure. Increase the exposure a bit. And now we'll select the levels. Bring up the black and bring down the white input. So now if we hit the zero key on your keyboard again, this is how it looks like. I hope you found the tutorial helpful and don't forget to subscribe and also watch my shorts.